25. Thought that Raynard spent a lot of time on a 125. Couldn't really make that happen. Had a lot of injuries. And I thought, well, let me just put that guy on a 250. And, and uh, he hasn't had all success on it, but he certainly looked good in that heat race. Said he felt better on it. And he's lined up on the far inside gate right there. If he gets a good start, he could run away with it. Okay, who will get to that 1 800 Pro race? Whole shot line first. It's worth a thousand bucks. But of course, with a title on the line, Jeremy McGrath and Jeff Emig are thinking much beyond that. Okay, they're revving up starts. Let's check out Jeremy McGrath's start. Buddy Anton is right next to him. Emig, McGrath, you can't get a better start with the two contenders. Emig at the angle on the turn. Wyndham is up there, but taking the lead back and forth. We go with Ezra Lusk. Wyndham, Jeremy McGrath cuts inside. Jeremy tucked inside of Emig and messed him up, threw him out into the hay bales. Now Emig's back in the pack. He's got a long ways to go to catch up to Jeremy. He's in 10th spot as Jeremy McGrath tries to get a lead on Bradshaw. Bradshaw has really been a favorite here in Pontiac before. He's got four wins. Jeremy McGrath has won three times here in Pontiac. Crowd on its feet all the way around the first lap. Jeremy already starting to choose some good lines. They check this stuff out on their parade lap, see what lines are getting too deep. Jeremy's turning just inside of those deep ruts, making new lines. Already McGrath starting to pull away. Already with a three-second lead on Bradshaw, and the battle is starting to be between Bradshaw and Ezra Lusk for second place. Ezra Lusk, three straight podiums. Look at number six, Larry Ward, coming into the picture. Number seven is Kevin Windham. Bradshaw, Lusk, and now it's Lusk, Bradshaw. Lusk with a little bit better line to that whoop section, able to work around Damon. Now Damon's got Larry Ward right there. And Windham for his first time up front on the 250 in the main event. Jeremy came down the hill and looked back at Ezra Lusk. He's, maybe he's counting the riders between him and Emmett. You can tell <laughs> Jeremy's on. He, he gets a little, a little bit cocky and he looks like he's having fun out there. He looks around a little bit. You can tell in his posture when things are going good and right now they're going great for him. But Lusk is still close. These guys are all charging. It's a fast pass. Lost Bradshaw, Ward, and Wyndham right now. Emig is in seventh place behind Kudrowski. Before you get up to Wyndham, Jeremy McGrath is taking the ruts that he likes as we see the pack coming through. Kudrowski, number 100, and Emig is right behind him. Lusk is actually starting to carve out of that lead that Jeremy had. If he turns around again, he's going to see that Lusk is moving away from that pack, catching him, and he's going fast to the whoop section. 59-5 lap time for Jeremy McGrath with Ezra Lusk right on his tail. Lusk took a third place in St. Louis. He won in Orlando his very first 250 Supercross, had a second place before that. What a string. Ezra Lusk is putting together. But right now, out in front, is Jeremy McGrath. Bradshaw still in third, Ward in fourth, Wyndham in fifth, and a battle between Kudrowski and Emig for fifth. For fifth, I mean for sixth. Emig has got his work cut out. You see all these guys. It looks like he went to the outside to try to make a move on Kudrowski, and that's going to stick. You see him coming to the picture pretty soon behind Wyndham. There's there number is. three, the block pass on Kudrowski. Emig is making his pull. Right he, now, this Jeremy seems to be charging as hard as he can, and Lusk is still just inching up ever so slightly, and he's dragging this pack with him of Bradshaw, Wyndham, and Larry Ward. Wyndham over the triple, changing lines, trying to go to the inside on Bradshaw in this corner. Not necessarily faster, but why follow the guy? Not only to get roosted, but if he falls, he run right into him. Bradshaw is the next target for Wyndham. He's only two bike lengths behind, as you see there. Number 10, Damon Bradshaw, Manchester Honda. And what a delight for the Yamaha fans with their 125 West Coast rider Wyndham putting in such a strong performance before he tries to wrap up the 125 Western title. 
you know, Lusk has had some great timing for this whoop section. He's jumping four or five to the middle section of that, and he's quick into the corner. That's where he made his pass on Bradshaw, and he seems to be gaining time right there on McGrath as well. He's got a four-second lead, Jeremy McGrath on Ezra Lusk, as we take a look at the battle for third. Bradshaw, Wyndham, Ward in that order with Emig. Several bike lengths behind. Bradshaw putting in a great ride. Oh, Bradshaw having trouble in the rut. Got and into that corner a little too hot. Hit that berm square instead of rolling into it. And the bike just wouldn't turn that sharp. He did a good job to stay on the racetrack right there. He could have easily gone off right there by that hay bale. And so Wyndham moves into third right here. Here's Damon. Look, he hits that berm Ooh. square. He didn't come in. He'd have been about a foot to his right. He could have laid it in there, but... He only dropped that one spot. That's not such a bad deal. Wyndham is flying. Maybe he can put, hit a ride and figure out what he was doing a little bit better. Maybe get him back later in stages of the race. Okay, the race for the 250 title continues from the Silver Dome. David Bailey, Marty Reed from Pontiac, round 12 of AMA Supercross. Jeremy McGrath is our leader with Ezra Lusk in second place. Jeremy just riding perfect. The way he got through that corner right there, just, he could have taken a picture, freeze frame, anywhere through that corner. He was in the perfect position, on the gas, perfect line, and still Lusk is there. Here's our leader, McGrath. Lusk is behind him, picking up some time now. That's three and a half seconds, it. yes. Making it through the whoops right there. Jeremy gets caught up in a few of those, and he starts bouncing up and down where Lusk is planing forward. This is our battle for third with Wyndham and Bradshaw. The section right here coming the other way. Lusk just went out of the picture. Lusk has been getting through there fast as well. There's a main line developing down the middle of that with a rut in it. Lutz is riding through there like it's flat. Emig has moved into sixth position right now. Everyone's spread out a little bit now to where, other than Bradshaw still keeping the pressure on Wyndham, uh, to where it's just whoever makes the most mistakes or the least, really, that's going to decide anything because... With the pace everybody is running right now, I don't see anyone, any of the major changes other than Emig making a charge at the end. He could possibly get Larry Ward, but Bradshaw and Wyndham right here are way ahead of him, and they got a pace that's just as fast, if not faster, than Emig right now. Lusk before the Wolves was three and a half seconds behind Jeremy McGrath. Now he blew at that time through this section right here as he came by and lost that time he'd gained. Boy, now where's, is where conditioning really pays off. 12 laps to go. Now, if you think about it as 12 laps, it's too much, especially if you got pressure on you. And you just have to start thinking of the races in smaller increments. It's okay, one more lap. Ezra Lusk came down off the hill, making up some time on Jeremy McGrath. A little bit of a stumble right there. Kevin Windham and Bradshaw. Third and fourth behind Ezra Lusk, number 11. Lusk did make that little mistake, but it was one of those kind that doesn't cost any time. Jeremy out front, still picture perfect, mistake free. All it takes is one, and the whole race will change. Amig is dropping back a little bit on the leader. Not in position, but let's check out the uh, Honda stopwatch right now. Look at the way Lusk hops that whoop section. He saves so much time, he just gained quite a bit. There's Wyndham, there's Bradshaw. And then Larry Ward. And that's the corner Emig just came out of where Jeremy gave him that little tap in the first lap. That's what set up this whole position. He's having to make up for 15 seconds down. And Albertine looks like he's putting some pressure on Emig. And of course, who's his teammate? Ryan Hughes will not pass Jeff Emig. I can guarantee that. Albertine coming up on Emmett, and he wants to get in front of him. They even add two more points to this young man's total right here. Wouldn't that be a story? After four consecutive Supercross championships, changing teams only a month, really, before, and only a week of bike preparation before the first round open. Fighting from behind the entire season, and Jeremy McGrath, Minute flat right there. These guys are still going quick, but Lusk keeps gaining. Lusk got a little bit 
held up there by a lapper at the end. Here's a look at Emig. You can see his timing is just off. Now Albertine's right there. Albertine, of course, will try to get by, and that'll help McGrath. I don't know if that's what's going through Albertine's mind right now, but it'd be going through mine if my teammate was out front and I could pass him. Uh, and Albertine and is the consummate team player, too, though. <laughs> he really is. That's what he's thinking. You can bet. And it's Emick's thinking about it, too, right now. He's going, okay, what's this guy going to do to me? And when you're in a position where you're losing something, you think all the worst things. Four and a half second lead for our leader, Jeremy McGrath and Ezra Lusk, as we take a look at the battle behind with Jeff Emig trying to hold on to his points lead. Right now, if he stays in this position, we will have a new points leader going into Charlotte Motor Speedway. Emig right now, to me, just looks a little bit like Ferry did in the 125. Like, he's just not riding up to his potential. It's hard to say why. If it's just, just not comfortable out here on this racetrack, or if his arms are pumping up a little bit, or if nerves are just too much. But when anybody's got this kind of pressure on me, I'm nervous. Albertine is right there, and now Ryan has caught this battle because Emig is, looks like in some spots, holding up Albertine just a little bit. Let's check down to trackside now with Marty Reed. Marty? Down here with Jeremy Albrecht. It looks like he's fading. He's like 18 seconds back. Can you put a pinpoint on what's wrong? Well, actually, we kind of had a little bit of a problem with arms up today. It's just, uh, I think, a lot of the ruts. And, you know, he's having a hard time with changing the bike around all day. We can't really tell if it's him or the bike. So there's a few changes we did, and I don't really know if it worked or not because he's out there right now. So we'll find out later. They're coming by again, guys. There you see Albertine still putting heat on Jeff Emmy. Now it's possible that Ryan Hughes could come in there and put some heat on Alby. Ryan's just got to be the team player right now, having missed so many races this season, to do whatever he can to help Emig win this championship. Emig in sixth place, Albertine in seventh, and Hughes right behind him in eighth. These guys are off the pace. They got an entire whoop straight away and a couple of double jumps before they can catch up with Larry Ward, who in fact is starting to put a little pressure on Bradshaw now. As we take a look at our field summary, the Suzuki field summary of Graf Lusk, Wyndham in third place. That would be his second 250 podium if he can hang on. And Bradshaw in fourth. And for Jeremy, this is one of those races where it's just one of the easiest things. It's probably rides a lot harder than this during the week when he's out practicing. And this is going to, if he can stay upright, earn him another win. And for Emig, it's going to be one of the most... Uh, races that he's going to want to forget, the one that was the toughest. Number one, with only a 3.6 second lead now, as Lusk tries to chop it down through the whoop section. Look at the ruts now, forming here in the 250. That amazes me right there, the way these guys get into that deep berm, the foot pegs are dragging, the rear brake pedal's dragging the inside, and they get out, keep their leg out of the way, and still jump that double right there. Kevin Windham's best finish is a 10th here in 250 action this year. That's about as technical a section as you're going to get. But last year, he took a third in Charlotte. He's trying to equal that performance. He's not out of the woods yet. He's still got Bradshaw and Larry Ward right there. But so far, it's been a great ride for him. And he had to ride a preliminary qualifier before the heat race started just to get into the program. So he's had plenty of laps out here this evening. And seven laps to go as Jeremy McGrath now makes it six laps to go, coming across the finish line jump. And he still holds a true three and a half to four and a half second lead on Ezra Lusk. Larry Ward continuing to keep the pressure on Bradshaw. Here comes Ward. Look out. He's got the angle. Larry Ward moves up a spot. Well, just after I was talking about how he can't finish that last five laps of the race, he started to put on a charge. Ryan Huffman went down hard on the triple. And they're having to single all the triples as the leaders go through the triples, unable to fly by. Looks like he's okay, but... And definitely. they pick up the pace again. Number one flies through the triple on the far side as he comes over the finish line jump. He's stretched out his lead over Lusk now. About, it's about five and a half seconds. Yeah, I was going to say it's about twice the size it was a couple of laps ago, so... Jeremy able to turn in those consistent laps, minute flat, minute flat, and uh, Lusk was doing the same thing, but as soon as you make a mistake, you can't get it back unless you can go out there and turn some 59s. It's 
too late in the race to be digging that deep into this bag of tricks, I think. And Jeremy McGrath, for the first time this season, win two races in a row. He's been unbelievable at getting on podiums this year. He's been on nine podiums in 11 races, Suzuki being on all nine, all 11 podiums. A great record for Roger DeCoster. Here comes Larry Ward. Larry Ward getting by oh, Wyndham. McGrath, McGrath going is down. down. McGrath is down, and he's under the bike. Lusk takes the lead. Ezra Lusk in the lead. You can hear his fans really splitting. They're standing up. McGrath cuts in front of Larry Ward, but still can't get his bike started. Let's check this out. Ward, can he pass him? Both Wyndham and Ward are by Jeremy McGrath, and McGrath's bike is in bad shape. And there goes Bradshaw. He went by just to, just to the left of your screen. Let's take another look at what happened. He jumps the triple. Now there's another little triple here. That's a technical section. Looks like everything's good there, but front end. Carves in there. He turns it a little too quick, and that soft stuff goes down, and he couldn't get up from that position. And it took him a few kicks to get the bike started, and that takes so much energy out of you at this point in the race. Believe me, he is tired. Not getting an official count of the lappers. I believe McGrath is two riders ahead, officially, of Emmy. Well, that's great news for the Kawasaki camp. This was devastating for Emick. He that has been lose. confirmed, David. He was going to lose the points lead, but now it's... Well, well that would take it down to two points for Emick. Lush, Quindam, Ward, Bradshaw, McGrath in the top five. Oh, my goodness, how quickly things change. And that corner has been a nemesis to many riders all night tonight. Certainly has. White One. flag lap for Ezra Lusk. One lap to go. Jeremy could possibly get around Bradshaw, but now you see Lusk wheeling down that start chute. He's got to be feeling great, and what caused that was him keeping the pressure on McGrath. If he'd have slipped back and settled for second, let McGrath have a much bigger lead than that, Jeremy, well, he may not have been trying that hard, but it was obvious he went into that corner, had to jump over those triples. And it, uh, it cost him big. Lusk, Wyndham in second. This could be his best 250 finish, number seven. And Ward in third, equaling his best performance of the year. Bradshaw after Ward and then Jeremy. Well, this certainly looks good at the moment for Yamaha right now, running one, two. And that which brings me to the point of Doug Henry, a, a real title contender. And we uh -oh. shouldn't miss him out here. Ezra Lusk taking it easy. He's looking for two wins in his last three races. On the podium for the last four straight. His fifth podium of the year. He went into this race wanting to be a spoiler. The flash bulbs are popping for this young man. Ezra Lusk, what a wonderful ride. The checkers for Ezra. His second win of the season, his second career victory, Jeremy McGrath. Trying to fly by Bradshaw, Jeremy McGrath. Bradshaw goes down. That'll add a couple of more points and tighten up the points race. Well, Bradshaw a... cased it terribly off that triple jump, coming into the corner trying to hold off Jeremy. Went into that corner with no control at all. Brad, uh, Jeremy squared him off and Bradshaw went down. There was either one, two, or three riders between McGrath and Emmy. We'll have to come back to look at the official AMA count to give you an accurate description as to how this points race is going to be when we head for Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll be right back in a moment.